Okay, let's have a look at Zechariah 14 because there is some interesting information regarding the future and regarding the coming kingdom of God in terms of the punishments that will be for the wicked. Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. A lot of information here. It's difficult to get exactly what's being said. But what we have here is an opening statement talking about the spoiling and the dividing of the people of God in the city of God. And then it says, in the second line, it says, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And you say, well, this is confusing because on, on the one hand, he's saying something good for Jerusalem, as you'll see later in this. And then, but here he starts out speaking evil. And you'll often see that. You'll see like he'll, he'll start out speaking evil and then he'll say something good or vice versa. And it's a little confusing, but what you have to realize is when things seem contradictory, it's because things are happening at a different time. So when it says, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. What's being said here is, is this is talking about the past, when Jerusalem was broken up and the nation of Israel was essentially disbanded. Then in the next part, of the second verse of Zechariah 14, it says that half the city shall go forth into captivity. And this is the captivity that is spoken of in other places in Scripture, talking about how the Jews will go into captivity into all nations, including Babylon, which is the current modern day United States of America. And then it says, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So residue, I take it here to mean the remaining, those that remain uh, shall, uh, shall not be cut off. And then it says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So this is talking about previous times that the Lord fought for Israel when he was fighting for them because they, they were as, as yet an obedient nation that he was caring for. But when the people sin, then God turns away from defending his people and they get attacked and destroyed by foreign nations. And it says, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, you see, so this is talking about the human presence of God, Jesus standing at the Mount of Olives as the Lord appears in the earth. And we know that Jesus is the appearance of the Lord in the earth. Also Jerusalem, so there's a possibility Jerusalem could be with him as well. Or this may even be talking about Jerusalem, but it, it probably means Jesus, I would say. And then it says, so just continuing from there, and his feet shall stand upon that stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall remove toward the north. So this is talking about some kind of Okay, mountain may, may mean nation, uh, and then uh, it, it says, shall remove towards the north and half of it towards the south. So it, this could be talking about the nation moving in two directions, unless it is talking about 
a supernatural event of a mountain moving, which is possible. So let's read that again, just to, because this is very cryptic. So we're going to read verse 4 again. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Probably talking about Jesus standing in the Mount of Olives, looking over the city. And which is before Jerusalem on the east. And on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it towards the south. So, it, it's cryptic. I don't know what all that means, but it's saying that it's talk, this is talking about the end times and the, and the salvation, because we know that because it says, and his feet shall stand upon the, the Mount of Olives. So that's, it's a human presence, probably Jesus, because the, the, the line previous to that says, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. And then it says, and his feet shall stand in that day. So we know that his feet means the Lord's feet, talking about likely Lord Jesus. Verse 5, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yeah, ye shall flee like as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. So there's several changes in the person speaking in the personage of speakage of speaking rather uh, but it's this is talking about the end time we can see because it says the saints within the saints are those that have graduated those that have made it those that will be redeemed in the earth as we see from the scripture that they are redeemed they are the psalm 45 more comely than the daughters of men that means they are more beautiful because what they are born of the Spirit. They have the new body, the wedding garment. Okay, it's also referred to as the wedding garment because if you found at the wedding feast of the Lamb without this newer, more beautiful wedding garment, you will be kicked out of the wedding. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at even time it shall be light. So we have, uh, once again, an unusual daylight occurrence. I don't think that's an analogy for something else, or it might be, but it's, I think this is talking about a, a day in which there will be unusual things, For we know because we know that also there's going to be a perpetual blackness, a gross darkness upon the land that shall come during the judgment. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go forth from Jerusalem. So this may be talking about the, the redemption, the flourishing of the bones uh, that we see in uh, Isaiah 28 and in Isaiah 66. Uh, and uh, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter it shall be. So this is talking about a continual event. Let's read that again. So um, it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at even time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them towards the former sea, and half of them towards the hinder sea. In summer and in winter it shall be. Okay, and here is where we get the confirming, Scripture confirms Scripture, the fact that Lord Jesus is going to be king, not just over Israel, but over the whole earth. God's Word says, that Jesus will be king over the whole earth. So the earth will have a central government and a central leader 
and that will be Jesus of Nazareth, the salvation, the one who died on, a, on the cross for our sin. If so be that we be worthy to receive that payment if we show worthiness in the covenant, which means believing in him and obeying his Ten Commandments, doing what he says in his word. Here's where we get that. It says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. It doesn't say his name here, but what name is that? Jesus. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hanel unto the king's wine presses. So, there's several things here that we learned, but, we, but this is talking about the kingdom, this is talking about the Lord's city, Israel, uh, the city Jerusalem, and his people, Israel, in their land, Israel, and it's talking about the, uh, the land shall be turned as a plain. So at some point, maybe it will be, maybe this is talking about a flattening, uh, but it's talking about these various different uh, things that are happening to the, the aspects of the land. And it's saying that uh, also, we see here at the end, that the, the king has wine presses. So he's got, there's going to be wine presses in the new Israel that shall be when he establishes it in the land. Which, as I have explained before, the scripture tells us, Jerusalem will be the first ruler of it. She will not be called a queen at that time. She is a judge, the same as Deborah the prophetess was not a queen. She was called judge of Israel. And next it says, And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. So there might be destruction, because notice it says utter. So you've got to read it like a legal contract. So there's going to be destruction, probably but not utter destruction. It means that the, the kingdom of God in the earth, as elsewhere in scripture it is confirmed, the kingdom of God will be an everlasting kingdom, an everlasting dominion. So even though the earth will be rolled, rolled up essentially sometime after a thousand years, uh, the city will continue as the uh, essentially a giant cube of clear gold coming down out of heaven and it will settle upon the new earth, and the, the earth will be a different kind of creation where there is no more sea. But I hope there'll be lakes, because I like bodies of water, and there probably will be. And it says about the, uh, okay, and it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. So there's going to be all these people that fight against Jerusalem. That's going to be one of the features that we're going to get in this next coming thousand years when Jerusalem, that is the, the daughter of Jerusalem, the daughter of God, the princess, uh, the judge of Israel, as I was just saying, uh, and first ruler of the kingdom of God's never to end kingdom in the earth, the world will be fighting against her at that time and she will have to defend herself but the Lord will come and defend her in the end. Because remember, at the very end of that, at the end of that thousand years, God's going to let Satan out of the prison, and they're going to go and uh, surround the city, and they're and getting ready to destroy it. But then what? Fire will come down out of heaven and destroy them, and that's how God will defend Jerusalem and the people of God. So uh, this is going to be happening in the future, and this is another uh, analogy or correlation with that. And uh, it says that th this is talking about the, the uh, punishment that is going to come against the people that have fought against Jerusalem. And it says, Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So there's going to be some kind of flesh-eating virus 
And uh, we've seen some of this before. Uh, there's, there, there, there's been talk about a flesh-eating virus. Well, this is going to be so fast-acting that it will eat away their flesh while they stand. It'll be fast-acting. So people will just be like, whoa. People just, just their, their flesh just, just gets eaten up as they stand there, just, just, just being dissolved, whatever. And, uh, and then it says, so it says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So this is, um, it's going to be a pretty uh, devastating punishment that's going to come upon all those that fight against Jerusalem. Will they listen? No, because, you know, they're, they're going to do this. The scripture cannot be broken. They won't heed the warning. They'll continue to attack Jerusalem. Who knows what they're going to do, you know, but the, but the residents of it, the scripture tells us, will dwell safely, yet they will continue to try to attack. But those that do, guess what? Their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Their eyeballs shall consume away in their sockets. People are going to see people's flesh getting eaten up while they stand there. It's all going to happen. God's word is perfect. It's pure. And we know it will come true 100%. It's the only 100% reliable document that we have. That's why it's important to read God's word. And it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. So another thing that rhymes with the video that I uploaded of how God will take away peace from the earth, and, uh, and that also uh, rhymes with what Revelation says. And so the, the, the people are going to be fighting against each other as, as part of the punishment of what's going on. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. So this is talking about the future and the redeemed people of God, and they are going to be heaping up the goods and the wealth of the heathen that have sinned and that have fought against Jerusalem. And then it says, And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. This is going to be done twice a year, and all the nations that remain, the people that are left of those nations that did not fight against Jerusalem, but they made peace with Jerusalem and Jesus, which are the Lord. So we see that here. We see this here. That's what, that is what this is saying. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations. So that's, that means all the people that weren't killed by the various plagues, that, that will come up upon those nations, the terror, the consuming flesh, the other pestilences, the, the natural disasters, the thing that kills a lot of people. But it says, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left, the remaining people, which came against Jerusalem, so, that's so the main reason all these people are getting punished with that means because they attacked Jerusalem, they shall go up, all the people. They shall go from year to year to worship the king. Who's the king? Jesus of Nazareth, the same one who died on the cross for our sin. That's the king. Men shall see him with their eyes, and they shall go and what? Worship twice a year at the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. 
So the sign of the people who are disobedient to God, the people whose hearts are against God, they're suffering a drought. The same as Babylon is suffering a drought now. And the world food shortage is, is growing because of the drought that they put upon Babylon because Babylon has also restricted and cursed and done all these other things to the nations so that they are dependent on the U.S. for a lot of food aid. And so they're all suffering because of the wrath of God upon Babylon. But this is talking about the future here when a similar thing will occur when those disobedient nations, the nations that won't go up and give honor to God because they don't, they don't believe in God, they don't want to give honor unto because there's a lot of people that are going to be in the earth that don't know it's God that created everyone and the earth, you see? But there's going to be people who do think that and they're going to obey and they're going to go. And it's going to be a joy. It's not going to be a chore. It's going to understand, friends. This is not going to be something, now everything's kind of a chore, everything's kind of a burden, as the scripture says, the burden that God gave to the prophet to give to the people, it's kind of a burden, it's kind of, it's kind of hard. But in the future, it's going to be a joy. It's going to be like a, a, a big party. Everyone's going to love it. They're going to come, and it's going to be a joyous occasion. But it's going to be also a ceremony, a, a function that shows a fealty to the government. That is loyalty to the government, which is the Lord who created them. And he is righteous to be the ruler. He is righteous that when he says that it's going to be a certain way in the earth, it, it, it's going to be that way. And the people better obey. And they will. Because the scripture also tells us that, that one day there will not even be people who God has to have a, a drought over them because as a punishment for their disobedience. It says that in, in the future, everyone will walk in the name of his God. Everyone. So the earth won't have any people that hate the Lord or that won't give honor to God that created them. That's what God's word is, is telling us here. It's an amazing thing. You say, well, how can that be positive? There's always going to be some people who don't like God. What about the people of other religions? What about those people? The scripture says that everyone remaining in the earth will walk in the name of his God. And then it says, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not and have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So all these people, all these nations, including Egypt, the people that are of them, the families in those nations, that will not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, which is twice a year, as I understand. They will also have the plagues, not just the, the drought, which will damage their, their ability to, to live, because you need the water. You need the water to, to water the crops. That's the point. You're going to run out of food, and there's going to be problems. And so the, the sign of the family that won't honor the Lord is that they will be under a drought and that they will be suffering want, and there shall be suffering because of the decisions of the fathers in those families that choose to not come up and worship the Lord, which is right, and which is good, and which is a joy for everyone that understands he's been created by our God, and that, you know, you have to, you have to obey the voice of he who created you. You know, if you're trying to find out how to operate your piece of machinery, and there's instructions that came with it, you got to follow those instructions or you're not going to be able to operate that machinery properly. Well, it's the same thing with people. You need to read the instruction manual, which is the scripture, God's word, in the authorized King James Bible. You need to read it carefully to understand what the maker is saying the right way to do it is. The right way to do it is to give honor to God. Obey the Ten Commandments, which are never dissolved, and have the faith of Jesus. Jesus says that my yoke is light. Come unto me, for my yoke is light. And he, do you think that he would say that under, under the conditions that his yoke would be heavier than the yokes we're under now? Of course not. It's going to be light by comparison. It's going to be a joy. Because the scripture also says that there'll be joy on their heads forevermore. All of those who choose to be a friend of God. And how do you be a friend of God? You believe in Jesus Christ on the cross for your sin.
that God sent him to die for us as a ritual, as a ritualistic payment for our sin. And you believe that he was, after he was killed, on the third day he rose again and showed himself to his apostles, also declaring that he had gotten the victory over death, which we can get if we will be a friend of our God who created us, which is believing in Jesus Christ.